all right guys welcome back and i hope you did the test well i believe you would have a better meaning and understanding of what idioms and idiomatic expressions are so let's see what's up next it's verbal analogies in verbal analogies we are given one pair of related words and another words without its pair the student must find the word that has the same relation that has the same relationship to the word as the first pair so you are analyzing let's assume you have two words here that is related to each other and you will have another two words here so the second pair one word is usually missing you have you are supposed to find that missing word so this is also another test of your language skill how good are you with synonyms and antonyms knowing the opposites knowing the similarities knowing what is the most relatable word you can find so that it describes your analogy how well you can analyze the words so let us see some examples so that you get a better understanding about what analogies are fire is too hot as ice is too cold so fire means something that's really hot you cannot tell fire is cold as ice is too cold so ice yes of course ice is cold so it makes a better relationship that way now let's take uh, now let's take a moment and i'm going to take you through some tips that will help you solve these analogy questions better first off try to determine the relationship between the first two pair of words when you get two words those two might have a meaning that can be easily related to the next set next eliminate any pairs in your answer choices that don't have the same relationship so once you understand the meaning between the first two words that's the key now when you understand that you will have a whole bunch of options out of which you can just negate some of which which don't make any sense it's completely fine try putting the first pair into a sentence aspirin relieves a headache therefore a nap relieves fatigue so remember one thing so always try using that first pair in a sentence that way you will know where it makes meaning so that way you will be able to decode it further easier sometimes also paying attention to the words that is a part of speech in which it is helps for example a uh, knife is to cut as pen is to write so here knife is a noun but cut is a verb so because cutting is an action so a knife is a noun so what does a knife do it cuts so the noun is to the verb so it's a relation there so the pen so that is the uh, given word by the question paper you have to find the word right so usually it goes that way so what does a pen do the pen is a noun again so there are multiple things you can do with pen so right is a much literal actual verb which makes sense there so you can choose right there so which makes it easy for you also to decode the questions now let me take you through a bit of common relationships that usually comes in most of the papers so going through some advanced papers like gre or ielts we come across some of these most common questions even appearing in gmat catmat and zat etc so i am i have just hand picked and put it into different sections which makes it easy for you guys to understand and after this i think it will help you also in attempting your test further ahead so let's go first one synonyms so synonyms meaning it it has the same meaning so wealthy is to affluent as to indigent is to poverty stricken so let's understand here so the two words are synonymous to each other so the two words is not in relation but which is together to each other so wealthy is affluent if you see in the dictionary so yes my friends again in this section also dictionary is your best friend in understanding words and its meanings so if you know the meanings then the relationship and the analogy just becomes as natural as possible so let's see here wealthy is to affluent indigent indigent is to poverty stricken poverty stricken so wealthy is someone with a lot of money 
Affluent is also you're wealthy or you're very good at what you're trying to do. So if somebody tells he is very affluent in English, so that means that person appreciating the other person's fluency in English means he's, he's, he's rich with the number of words and the meanings that he knows. He has a very wealthy family, which means again, he comes from a family with a lot of wealth and riches. So both mean the same. Similarly, indigent and poverty stricken, both means they are very, very poor. So that is synonymous to each other, indigent and poverty stricken. So now let's see the next example. Antonyms. So antonyms is opposites. So synonyms means it is the same. Antonyms means it is the opposite. So zenith is to nad nadir. Pinnacle is to valley. So we all know a valley is a low flowing river in between two mountains. So imagine it's at the lowest of the depths. Whereas the pinnacle of a mountain, the pinnacle of a hill, of a high rise, of a canyon. So a pinnacle is usually at the top. So at the most richest point of itself. So valley and pinnacle are very much opposites. So similarly, zenith and nadir. So zenith means at its best performance, at its highest level of performance. Nadir or nadir again here means which is not at its top performance, which is at its lowest point possible. So they are antonyms. So zenith is to nadir means uh, peak is to its lowest point. So dash is to valley or pinnacle is to dash. So there you can fill it with the most appropriate words. The only way you guys can get really good at this is if you guys have good strong hold on the language, which can be done only by going through a dictionary from time to time. Learning new words helps you solve this section quite easily. General versus specific. So something that's general to something that's very specific. A sports bike is very general. A Ducati Monster is very specific about which sports bike I'm talking about. Hope this gives you a personalized example. Now, let's see. Orange is to fruit as beet is to vegetable. So, orange can be a color, but here orange has already been specified as a fruit. So, a beet is what? A beet is nothing but a beetroot. So in short, it is called as a beet. So a beet is a vegetable. It's not a fruit. A beetroot is a vegetable. So that is general to specific. So orange is general. Fruit is specific. So a beet is general. A vegetable is specific. Now let's see some more. Difference of degree. So let's see what this has to tell us. Slender is to skinny. So clever is to crafty as modest is to prim. So difference of degree is nothing but comparing a phone to a better phone. So it's iPhone 5 and I have an iPhone 6. So iPhone 5 is a degree and the difference is it is older compared to iPhone 6. So here Slender is thin, but a skinny is thinner. Similarly, you might be clever, but if you're crafty, you're much smarter because you're able to think and also get it done at the same time. Similarly, if you're modest, you're prim. So look at the degree. A prim personality is someone who has the highest level of modesty you can know. So this is a difference in degree. Remember, this is going in the upward scale. Whereas slender to skinny is coming in the downward scale. Next. Person related to tool or trait, skill or interests. Let's see. An entomologist is a person who is interested in insects. Whereas a philosopher is someone who is interested in ideas, in thinking. So here you should see the relation what is coming between the person and his interest or his tools of trade. So an entomologist tools of trade is insects. So without insects, being an entomologist is useless. Similarly, without ideas, philosophy is meaningless.
part and whole. So if you do you all remember the pencils back in the day when it used to have an eraser tip to it? So if an eraser is part of a pencil, dash is part of a comb. So it is a tooth. So I think this is as simple as it can get for an example. So we have more. Now let's see what's up next. Steps in a process. So you just don't jump from step one to step five. So you go to step one, two, three, four, five. So similarly, so in a process, you cannot serve food without cooking. So without processing your words, you cannot print it either. So cooking is to serving like word processing is to printing. So you need to prepare really well before you give it to others. Similarly, this presentation, what you're seeing, without me processing every single slide, you wouldn't have got such a good printout format on screen. Cause and effect. So if you cause something to someone, it leads to an effect. It can be natural, it can be man-made, it can be by accident or it can be deliberate. An example should help you guys here. So fire is to scorch as blizzard is to freeze. So it is just giving the properties and what is the effect that it is going to leave across. So fire is the cause. So fire can leave scorch marks on the walls. It can scorch your skin. It can scorch your eyes out. Whereas a blizzard, of course, a blizzard is always cold. So a blizzard can freeze you at times. So fire is to scorch as blizzard, blizzard is to freeze. Thing and its function. Now, thing and its function is like a product and what job it does. Like scissors is to cut as pen is to write. Or you can also tell a phone is to call and a pointer is to track. I guess this is the last section for you guys to understand when it comes to the different analogies that I have shortlisted for you. So qualities or characteristics of anything for that matter. So aluminium is usually lightweight, whereas a thread is fragile. So we are also comparing the characteristics of the product which we are coming here. So aluminium is a lightweight quality and its characteristics also says that it is very light in nature. Whereas a thread is way smaller compared to it and it's fragile. Substance related to end product. So substance related to end product. So nobody would like a scarf made out of uh, polyester. So who would wear a scarf made out of polyester? A scarf is usually made with silk. Make it royal. So similarly, a sweater is always good when it is made out of wool. Keeps you warm for a really long time. So always understand that whatever we are comparing here is comparing the substance. So silk is a substance here and the end product is a scarf. So wool is a substance here and its end product is a sweater. Implied relationships. Cloud is to sun as hypocrisy is to truth. Cloud and sun makes sense, but hypocrisy and truth, hmm. so far away, right? But let's look at the example here, implied relationships. So it's implemented, it is not something that has to be there. So a clouds can also be related to rain, whereas the hypocrisy related to the truth, because both are relative to each other. Here, you are implementing clouds can hide the sun. Also, at the same time, the clouds can give you rain. But hypocrisy here can only give you one thing, that is your escape from the truth. And you know what that means? We have a bonus round of more relationships that you need to keep in mind. Thing and what it lacks. Atheist is to believe and indigent is to money. So what is this thing and what it lacks? So lacks means something that it is short of, something that it doesn't have. So who is an atheist? Atheist is a person who follows no religion. 
So if you say an atheist has no belief, yes, of course, he doesn't believe in a structural form of God. He doesn't believe in God for that matter. So an atheist is to believe. So that is, belief is something what an atheist lacks. Similarly, an indigent is to money. An indigent is a poor person, a foreigner who has come to a foreign land and doesn't know the ways. So what is the one thing that he lacks there? Knowledge and money. So an indigent is money. Atheist is to belief as indigent is to money. Symbol and what it represents. A dove represents peace. A four clover leaf represents luck. So similarly, there are a lot of symbols that you can see which relates to something. Now, next time you ever see a half-eaten apple logo, you will automatically tell it belongs to apple. And similarly, if somewhere, if you see a tire burn mark logo, you will definitely tell it's Bridgestone. So it makes total sense that way. So always remember a symbol and what it represents. So a dove represents peace. A four clover leaf represents luck. The reverse swastik symbol can represent the Nazi as well. So the relationship is up to you how you want to put it across. As long as the relationship is known to everyone generally and is a followed trend and tradition in today's era. And finally, we come to the last section of this module and that is your test guys. Now, take a moment and go back through the video again if you want to understand all the verbal analogies one more time because I'll be throwing across a lot of verbal analogy specific questions also mixing in a little bit of idioms there. So I want you to take your time through this test, make it a good one and all the very best to you. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.